Today, we are going to go through a basic search on Realm, and I'm going to try to keep this as simple and straightforward as possible. We're also going to go through some of the troubleshooting issues that you may be experiencing. So from the home page, let's click on either Realm or Search Properties. They will both take you to the same spot. This is your dashboard. From here, scroll to the top of the screen where we have the search button. You'll see there's two. The one on the left where you can actually type is where you can uh, add in an actual address or MLS number. Here is where we're going to actually type in a search and go through filters. So black bar, top of the screen, search. Okay, I'm going to make a quick stop right here because already your screen could look different than mine. In order to adjust, you're going to go to the top right-hand side where we have the buttons layout and searches. I click on layout and going through these options here will change how your um, search filters look. So right now I'm in consumer mode. Uh, the map is obviously... This map right here of listings, cards are um, how we refer to these listings over here, just a photo and three lines. Uh, a table is something that you might be used to when looking at a list of results. And you can see now that I've clicked table, my filters and buttons have moved over to this left-hand side. So I'm gonna start in consumer mode. Okay, but I want to remind you that all the uh, buttons are and all the filters are still the same. It doesn't matter which layout you've selected. So we'll navigate from left to right. So let's start with location. Okay, the first box, I can enter in an exact MLS number. Then I have area, municipality, and community. I can also uncheck these and just use the map search, in which case I'm using what's in my map here to scroll in and navigate this way. You can see my results are changing here as I move my map around. I also have options to draw a circle or a polygon within my map search. And that will narrow my results down even more. If I wanna get rid of this shape that I've drawn, I'm gonna click on it and press the garbage can. Go back to the filters. So first thing I'm gonna do is uncheck map search and Click on area, municipality, and community. So let's say the listing I'm looking for is in Mississauga. So I'm going to go peel. And then municipality, let's narrow that down. So you can see the peel, the options for peel are jump to the very top. Okay. Underneath that, you will have all of the remaining municipalities listed on TREP. Okay, so don't let that confuse you. You only want to look at the ones that are listed at the very top underneath the area you selected. I'm gonna click Mississauga and you can see my map is getting a little bit smaller. It's narrowing down and then I can click community. Again, all the, all the Mississauga communities jump up to the very top. Okay, and then there's, there's a space which you can barely see. So you gotta really pay attention to that. And then you'll see a bolded word here. And then that will be the next set of communities. Okay, so make sure you don't go scroll crazy and end up all the way down here. You wanna stay up at the top under the first set of communities. And those will be the ones that are in Mississauga or your selected municipality. I'm going to click Aaron Mills. Okay, so that's narrowed it down even more. Now, troubleshooting tip. 
you're selecting area, mun municipality, and communities, uh, any one or all three of these, make sure you have this button checked off, okay? Watch what happens if I uncheck. So you can see I've got all my listings here in this nice little pocket. As soon as I uncheck it, it expands. So what it's doing now is it's showing me all the listings in Aaron Mills plus all the listings in Mississauga plus all the listings in Peel. Okay, so it's showing me all three of these things. It's not narrowing it down. So now that I check it off, it's showing me the listings in Peel, but only the ones that are also in Mississauga, but only the ones that are also in Aaron Mills. Okay, another quick trick is if you already know that your community you're looking for, let's say is Aaron Mills, you don't necessarily have to uh, fit in all of these steps. You can skip right to your community. Okay, so I'm gonna click done. So I wanna go to the next tab now. So let's go to for sale. Now this button will change depending on what your default is. If your default is for lease, your button might not say for sale. Your button might say for lease. The way you're going to change that is by clicking on that actual tab and making sure that what you're looking for is highlighted in blue. So we have sale, lease, and sublease. So I only want for sale. So I'm going to click on lease and then that takes off the lease button. Again, available and unavailable. Whatever you're looking for, make sure it's highlighted in blue and you do that by clicking it. Now, troubleshooting number two. You see we've got this bar here um, that will show you, that's sort of giving you an idea of how, um, how far back you're going in time, okay? I do not recommend using this bar because there are no actual indicators of what year you're on. You kind of have to guess. Okay, now it says I'm in 2018. Okay, where am I now? 2020. Okay, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to ignore this for now. There is another spot where you can put an exact date. Okay, and that's under more filters. So we will we will get there. I'm going to keep available on for now. Okay, next button. Again, mine says freehold. That's based on my defaults and my most recent search. So I'm gonna click this button. And again, if I want condos, if I want commercial properties, whatever I'm looking for, just make sure it is highlighted in blue. Here, you can select the type that you'd like as well. So if we're looking for detached, okay. Next, we have bed and bath. Okay, another troubleshooting tip here. If I'm looking for a minimum of two bedrooms and I click two, let's see how many results I have, none. Now that doesn't make any sense, right? There have got to be detached homes for sale that have a minimum of two bedrooms. Well, they are. However, this is not minimum, this is an exact number. So what I wanna do if I want a minimum of two bedrooms is I have to make sure these are all clicked. So two and three. Okay, now my listings are starting to appear. And four bedrooms and five bedrooms. Okay, same things with bathrooms, okay? Uh, sorry, next we have bedrooms um, plus. So anything um, below grade or a den. Okay, um, and then next is bathrooms. So same thing, I want at least two bedrooms. Okay, you can see that narrows me down to only two houses, uh, but I want so two bedrooms or three bedrooms or four and up, I'll take it all. Okay. Next tab we have is price. We have two options for price. We have a just one called price, and then we have something called list price. The list price is pretty straightforward, okay? That is what the actual listing price is, okay? And then you have price, which is what we can use for searching um, sold, 
prices on available listings. Okay, um, since we are looking for availables today, I'm going to use this one down here called list price. Okay, and you can see my range. I have from $0 to unlimited. Okay, you have free filled in amounts here. You also have, and it's right between the zero and the 25, it's kind of hidden, okay? You have the word custom. And I say it's hidden because as soon as you click this, the first thing you're gonna do is start to scroll down here. And you're gonna go to the bottom and you're not gonna see anywhere to type in. You have to go back to the top and click custom. Now that I've selected custom, I can type in any obscure number that I like. Okay. Same thing with unlimited. I can type in custom or I can select maybe 1.2. Okay. All right, now we have more filters. You have some uh, already standard filters here. And then at the very, very bottom, you have add a field. So add a field. You have so many more filters to choose from. Okay. I'm obviously not gonna take the time to go through all of these, but if you're looking for something very specific, you can scroll through your, um, your bonus filters here and add them onto your, your search page. So navigating this field, or these fields uh, pretty quickly, um, status. So we have deal fell through extended, as in the expiry date was extended, uh, new, price change, sold conditional, and sold conditional with an escape clause, okay? You also have something up here called not. So instead of checking all of these off, except for maybe I don't want to see the sold conditionals, what I can do is I can click on not sold conditional and not sold conditional with an escape clause, okay? So that filters out everything that is not these two. Okay. Uh, if you have the street number, street name, you can, if that's something you're looking for, you can put that in here. Um, anything that has a, a box where you can type, what you can do is maybe you know, um, maybe you know part of the street name. Maybe you know it's on um, Aaron something, but you're not sure if it's Aaron Mills, Glenn Aaron, uh, but you know it's Aaron something. It could be Aaron Dale. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in the word Aaron and I'm gonna make sure it says contains Aaron, okay? I can also, if I know it starts with Aaron, I can be very specific if it ends with, okay? Or maybe there's, I, I'm looking at everything, um, except I don't want anything on Winston Churchill. So I can type in not or maybe there's a particular building that your client does not want to be in, this would be very handy if you're trying to exclude um, a building. Uh, scrolling down, again, updates and days on market. Any particular spot where you are um, searching a date, make sure if you're clicking a from date, you're also clicking a to date. So I want from the 1st to the 25th. If we're not doing that, you could potentially be looking at homes that say if you're looking at sold homes um, that are only sold on that specific date and that's not what we want. Going forward, the rest of this is, is pretty straightforward. You can look for the style, um, parking spaces. Remember, this is the exact same as the number of bedrooms and the number, number of bathrooms. If you need at least two parking spaces, you can put in two or three, or four, or five. Uh, heating type, air conditioning, if it has a pool, et cetera, et cetera. Now, remember at the beginning, I mentioned uh, that if you're looking for properties that are unavailable, so let's pull that up real quick, not to use this bar, okay? And I will show you why. I clicked on available, and now I'm in my more filters section. Now that I've clicked unavailable, this extra button has shown up, okay? This extra filter, sold date. So I've got a from and a to. So now I can narrow down, okay? 
So here you is where you're going to use your exact date feature if you're using a CM, if you're doing a CMA, anything like that, rather than toggling back and forth on the bar. So from here, now that we are done, we've put all our filters in. You can see I have two gray buttons on the bottom. I have done and I have explain. This explain button is awesome. If you are not getting um, the number of results that you thought you would, click on this explain button. And it shows you exactly what it is that's narrowing down your results. That's really helpful if you need to show this to a client. Um, and, you know, they can see exactly what it is that is restricting the number of homes that they have to search through. I'm going to click close. And done. And this will display our listings. While we are here, really quickly, let's jump up at the top. You do have uh, this beside the layout button, you do have searches. Clicking on the search button will give you the option to save a search. So you can save it for yourself just to come back to, or this is where you can set up a prospect search. So clicking on the save search button, because we just did all this work, uh, I can uh, give it a name. Okay, I can save it for myself. Uh, or I can save it under a client that I already have entered. Also select notifications, how often we get these notifications, uh, if I want them uh, just on the app or by email or both. And if I want them uh, daily, so once a day or in real time and save search. So now that I've done this, I can see my listings are displayed as a card on the left-hand side and I have the map on the left. If you're looking for more detailed view of the listings, you're going to go up to the top, click on layout. And you can either switch it to map and table or just table. Okay, and if you want to get rid of these filters on the left, if it's taking up too much space, you can hit this X over here at the top left. Okay, and then you have the listings similar to how they look on, uh, how they used to look on Stratus. Okay, hopefully that answered all your questions on how to do a basic search. If you have any more, let us know in the comments below.